So when it comes to a robot topic, there are actually going to be two topics. All right. There are different steps that you absolutely have to go through, which are really important, even essential. The first step, in my opinion, and I always say this, is to define the type of dosing system you're going to need. That is, there are going to be a multitude of different types of dosing systems. We're going to have valves, jetting systems, and volumetric systems. And for that, you first need to choose this equipment based on the fluid you're going to dispense. Because if it's an oil, a grease, a glue, UV glue, cyanoacrylate, will have, you see, a whole range to offer you. It's absolutely necessary to define this once you've given us the information about the fluid. So it's very important for us, of course, to have the technical data sheet, especially with the viscosity. And if it's glue, what type of reactant is it? What kind of polymerization? And what is the pot life duration? Once we've defined all these elements, once we have all this information and have chosen the dispensing system, we can set it aside for now. In general, a dispensing system is made up of three things in most cases. The valve, the valve controller, and the reservoir, cartridge, or syringe, depending on the type of container you need. That's the first thing. Once we've defined that part, we can finally move on to the automated section. On the automated side for the robot, the first thing we're going to, the first question we'll ask is, is this a robot that will be used in a cell or on a separate table or for R&D? Or is it a system that will be integrated directly into a production line? When I say a production line, that could mean on an assembly line or uh, a carousel. We could imagine a carousel or even a conveyor belt underneath. We'll have different types of robots to offer. If it's, for example, for a conveyor, we'll suggest a gantry robot with all the axes X, Y, Z on the arm, and we'll be able to integrate it into all the production systems of a typical factory in general. If, on the other hand, we're dealing with something that will be used in a cell with an operator nearby, We'll rather choose a robot with the Y axis on the table and the X and Z axis on the arm, which moves over the upper part. Uh, we'll then ask for photos and, indeed, part drawings to determine which technology we need. That is, we have the standard three axis systems, but we'll also have four axis ones. What's the advantage? With a standard three axis system, we can apply material directly onto the part. With a four-axis system, the fourth axis is around the z-axis. That means there's an axis around the z-axis that rotates around the part. The advantage is being able to apply material horizontally, for example, on cylinders or things like that, because we can actually work in 3D. That's the real benefit of the four-axis system. The other question we're going to ask is about the level of precision you need. In other words, do we need to be ultra-precise or can we be a bit more relaxed when it comes to tolerances? We'll have different types of robots to offer. We'll have robots, indeed, that offer eight microns of repeatability across all axes. Or if you need something a bit more precise, we can go down to four microns of repeatability on all axes to ensure truly perfect repositioning during placement and to get as close as possible to what the client wants. Uh, we'll also have things to help the client like control systems, systems for monitoring the dispensing process. We'll be able to add controls for the dispensing process. We can use a laser to determine the height of the part, since there can be variations in part height. So in this case, as the robot moves, it will be able to adjust its height to always maintain consistent dispensing. Let's imagine we have a sloped dispensing process. Well, thanks to this laser, the dispensing can move up at the same time and always have. Let's say perfect repeatability. Uh, we will also have, later on if we want, a confocal laser that will allow us to check if the dispensing has been done properly and also to check the height of the deposit, which, in my opinion, can be very important if, for example, there are requirements for filling, for potting, or that kind of thing. Once we've defined all that, we pretty much have most of the elements we need. And the last thing is the number of parts requested by the client in relation to the size. And with that information, we'll be able to determine the size of the tray because we'll have different tray widths to work with. 
we go from 200 by 200 in terms of tray size up to 500 by 500, knowing that we have a maximum working area of about 600 by 600. That's basically the idea. And once we have all the elements, we've more or less defined the robot for the client.